Esther Lee is president of the Publication Club at Queensborough Community College. And real quickly, in five seconds or less, Publication Club is an emerging pop culture phenomenon. So look it up on the internet. Yes, please do. Esther is also uh, in her third semester at Queensborough. Welcome, Esther Lee. Hi, I'm reading something like a, um, I don't know, I guess like memoir or something. I don't know. Um, it's based on my experience going to Hagwon, and I'll explain in a couple seconds what that is. I'll just start reading. Um, it's common for Asian kids to attend an extra school in addition to regular school. They teach various subjects and everything but the social sciences for all grade levels. Their main focus, though, was test taking, SATs in particular. This school is called a Hagwon in Korean. Um, it's called different things in different Asian languages. Um, Practically everyone Asian went. If you didn't go, your parents were either Americanized or not strong believers in education. I felt like most parents that resisted sending their kids for a while eventually gave in to peer pressure because Hagwon was a must. Anything that could boost your kid's performance was a must because bragging about your kid's academic performance or their talents was the equivalent of toting around a puppy in a designer bag. However, my dad saw it in a different light. He rejoiced at the prospect of shipping me and my sisters off and not having to worry about us for a good four to six hours. He must have really loved doing this because he always forgot to pick us up on time. <laughs> on a good day, it was a half hour wait. On a bad day, it was two hours. On one really bad day, I remember waiting three hours for him. We were cranky as hell and we certainly made it known, but no amount of complaining or rebuking or telling mom could make the man come on time. Of all my wretched experiences going to these institutions, there was a summer that was especially unbearable. I don't know how I got through it, but I think it had something to do with the Jason Mraz CD, which is probably the most upbeat music you'll ever listen to, and the amazing ability for humans to adapt. Now, this was a year that I had to go alone since my sisters were in college and therefore free. Um, the school was located in a dingy basement of an office building. It had few windows, some leftover office furniture, stacks of paper, and old SAT books. It was pretty dim in the cubicle area where students were expected to get some self-studying done, and the fluorescent lighting in the classrooms made everyone look a little haggard. It wasn't very clean either. In addition to the boxes, stacks of paper, and a haphazard furniture arrangement, there was fungus growing in the bathrooms and the place had a funny smell to it. Overall, the atmosphere was kind of depressing. Despite all that, the worst part was not the place. It wasn't the strict, cynical teachers who cursed kind of often, the unfriendly students who also happened to be doing better than I was, nor was it the fact that they all knew I did horribly in class because our grades were posted next to our names on a list taped to classroom doors. It wasn't the two-hour classes, the 10-hour day, and I kid you not, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., or the fact that my dad came late all the time. The worst part, by far, was the owner of the place. He was my cousin. Thank God we weren't blood-related. Um, the man had a reputation in the Korean community. He was pulling in a lot of money from his Hagwon business because he knew how to produce results. Kids' scores would go up 200, even 300 points after attending his school. There were countless 1600s and A students that all went to colleges ranked in the top 20. His method? Pure intimidation. He didn't take crap from anybody. He would yell and hit and embarrass the kids, whatever worked, to get their scores up. There was even a white kid that he smacked around with a newspaper because he was 20 minutes late to class. He never came late to class again. Um, it's amazing the kid didn't say anything to anyone about that, but I guess it helped that he ended up going to Yale. Um, apparently the man stopped administering physical punishments after he got married to my cousin, but particularly after he had kids. After that, he only embarrassed students and yelled at them. He made me look like a fool all the time. I would love to elaborate on that but I have my dignity to consider. Um, needless to say, it was my goal to avoid him as much as I could. Some days I succeeded, most days I didn't. I originally had a three hour break that was spent eating lunch, listening to music, getting some homework done or drawing. I absolutely treasured this time I had to myself, but it was fragile, for the cruel man soon discovered that I had free time and he couldn't stand it. So he tried to enroll me in more classes. He gave me problems to do or copies to make. I was doing backflips to avoid him during my breaks. Eventually, though, he succeeded in quashing the bit of hope I had for getting through the summer by giving me jobs to do. Uh, I actually became an unpaid assistant, kind of like a slave, only <laughs> I didn't get free food or housing. Uh, it was my job to make copies and file things. 
uh, that's right, paper jams and paper cuts galore. Uh, in addition, I had to tutor his sons, who were cute, but impossible to control. As if I wasn't miserable enough, he also made me clean up and vacuum the place using a dilapidated vacuum cleaner since he was too cheap to get a new one or pay a janitor. Um, I wish I could tell you that things improved, that I eventually improved in my studies uh, and proved to my classmates and teachers how capable I was, that my cousin became nicer, that I discovered a wonderful friendship, that I walked away with some great insight or that I didn't waste my time and my father's money. I got absolutely nothing out of it, and I can't help but wonder what I could have done with that time. Actually, I probably would have done nothing with that free time, but I know I certainly would have been happier. More importantly, what could my father have done with that money? Arranged a family vacation? Saved up for my college tuition? Donated to charity? Arranged a family vacation? But it's already been done. Well, I figured it's so ridiculous, I might as well write about it, and I did. And I plan on basing a children's story on this experience, only it will have a happy ending. Aww. <laughs>